May the Lord strengthen you with his supernatural resolve in all the decisions you are facing today, dear heart dwellers. I wanted to share with you just a little of my time with Jesus today. I've been feeling strangely distant from him and discovered that my friends, so-called friends, from the dark side have been messing with my mind and rewiring it into the world, while I, for my part, was struggling to connect with the Lord. Well, Jesus came in and rewired it back to where it was. <laughs> but when I first saw him today, he was walking towards me from about 30 feet away, and I saw that I was covered in black spider webs that were preventing my connection with the Lord. When he stood right before me, one swipe of his hand and they were all gone, except for the ugly leftover tatters. He then blew on those and they erupted into flames and smoke and were gone. Then he gently took my hand and led me to that heavenly ballroom and we danced and danced, having a wonderful time in worship to Terry McAlman's music. From that time on, he's been so clear and present, thank God. I just wanted to share that. We still do dance together, but this is a season not to focus on dancing, but on other things. The message tonight is for those of you facing a decision to serve the Lord or stay where you are in the world. It is a message we have all had to receive at one time or another when we decided to follow the Lord into the unknown and out from our security. And in particular, a dear brother who has been struggling to obey direction that has been confirmed to him by the Lord. Jesus began, I do not wish for any to die, but some must die to themselves since they've been living a life of corruption in the world. Sometimes the breaking is very, very hard. Other times it comes on slowly and in manageable doses. I know what is best for each soul. Claire, I cannot soften this assignment. I had asked the Lord to uh, give this soul something more doable. He said, Claire, I cannot soften this assignment. I must bring him face to face with his fears so he can overcome everything, every phantom that has held him back. It isn't any easier for me than it is for him, and it's painful for both of us, yet it is what must be done. If he's going to move forward into his destiny, he must do this. There are no ways around it, no shortcuts, no bypasses. He must go through this. The question is this, and here he's addressing the person, do you love me? Feed my sheep. What more can I say? No shortcuts. Obedience. Many do not realize that I allow circumstances in their lives because that is the next step on the road to sanctity for them. Their thinking, success, security, peace, happiness, the way the world has all these things. I'm thinking, before you can truly have these things, the real things, authentic peace, authentic security and success, you must conquer the untamed land of your own will and your own opinions. My ways are not your ways, dear one, any more than your little two-year-old toddler's ways and choices are not your choices for him. If you let a child have their own way, do whatever they want, you will have a corpse lying before you in no time. That's why I gave you parents, little one. They know the way to true security. Growing up is not easy. You encounter many failures as you learn to walk, swim, and do homework, take tests, go to the dentist, learn how to drive, get your first job, spend your first paycheck. Growing up is not easy, nor is spiritual maturity easy. 
Learning how to deny yourself is only one leg of the journey. The other is following me with your cross. You cannot follow me unless you deny yourself. What seems like folly to the world is the very pinnacle of wisdom from me. And stubbornly clinging to your old ways is the very bottom of the pit of foolishness. You will accomplish nothing you will be proud of when you die, if you live in that pit. You will have very little to recommend you to a place in heaven. And there are two levels of obedience. In one way, a man chooses what looks best for him, considering what he has learned from the scriptures and the examples of others around him. This is the purse of his own opinions. I call this obedience only because he's trying to be obedient to the examples around him and in the scriptures. Then there's another level of obedience. This is when the soul comes to me, empty and destitute, and seeks me out until he finds me and says, What do you want me to do, Lord? This soul will avoid all the pits the first soul will undoubtedly fall into. There is a way which seems right to a man, but in the end is the way of death. That's Proverbs 14, 12. The one who releases control of their lives over to me will not fall into these pits but it requires death to self-will and personal opinion, or the opinion of any man, for that matter. I hate to see suffering in those who wish to serve me, but unless they go the way of the cross as I did, they cannot attain to or be trusted with the higher spiritual gifts, because they'll corrupt them with self-will and teach others that as well. And so I must break the stronghold of self-will and self-intelligence first. If the soul is willing to look foolish to the world, but act out of faith in this world, then I can trust them with the greater gifts. They will reproduce their behavior in those who follow them. That is why those who are called to teach are admonished. Not many should aspire to teach for they will be measured with a stricter rule. Lord, do you have a message for our general audience? Not really, not quite yet, except this is a season of tests, dear ones. Just as you apply for a job and are given tests to see if you're competent, I'm handing out aptitude tests for the will in each soul to see how deep their commitment goes. I will tell you, there is coming a time of blossoming in your assignments. But before I can move any deeper into your destinies, I must test your willingness to let go of the familiar and secure ground, and your readiness to go into uncharted territory, not knowing what to expect, but trusting that I know, and that's good enough. These tests will determine your placement and whether or not you can serve me with your whole heart or if you will hold back certain areas from me. The rewards are tremendous, but this is not the time for rewards, but an assessing of strong points and weak points, and if you are even trainable. I think the story of the team of horses that pulled the king's carriage would be good to share here. And I'll be sharing that with you in tomorrow's message. And thank you so much for taking care of us every month. We're putting together a new book called Rhema that you can pray and open to get direction for your life. And it'll be taken from all of the messages, all 600 and whatever messages we have here. Uh, that and some other projects. I think the portrait's going to be done this week and we'll have it up in a large format for you to copy if you want. Thanks to your monthly support, we're able to help the people here in Taos, single mothers especially and the elderly who are taking care of their grandchildren and begin these new projects and finish them too. So we're excited about that. 
And Carol has written a book for young teens, and it's just awesome, called A Garden Enclosed. And we're going to have it up on PDF format on the Heart Dwellers website. And she's also beginning a book on spiritual warfare that will have different teachings from Dr. Sherry's experiences and our experiences to help you combat the evil in this world, especially as it comes after you individually. So there are a lot of things that we're doing thanks to you uh, being a supportive family. Some of your comments on the pages make me cry. They're so sweet and so kind. And the progress that some of you are making and that you share really encourages us. Thank you again. The Lord bless you all, heart dwellers. You all have become our very, very precious family, and we adore you.